the first official Minecraft 1.21 Bedrock Preview is now here, and this is huge news for all of these reasons, but also there's one I know everyone should be excited about. If you play Bedrock, something that has plagued us since the dawn of time is the fact that when TNT explodes, it doesn't drop every single block. However, now they have introduced a parity change that actually makes explosions run faster. This is incredible by itself, but let me show you another great parity change, because did you notice my heart? If you did, then let me tell you about a brand new feature, because I will not respawn into regular game mode Minecraft, because now I'm stuck in spectator mode. That's right, Hardcore has officially come to Bedrock. Also, it's implemented slightly better than Java because of some new UI changes. And so let's talk about all of these things in today's video. Hello, I'm ABX Toy Cat, and this is 1.21.0.20, or in layman terms, the first preview and beta for Minecraft 1.21. This means that the last sub-update for 1.20, 1.20.80, including armadillos and wolves is officially finished and it's currently on its way, working its way to being out and now all of the resources from here and out will be focusing on 1.21 and so this means it has the obvious things that you would expect, the biggest ones being the new ominous features, these are all locked behind the experimental changes because they're part of 1.21 but the interesting thing about these is there is some small changes like breezes, no longer jumping in lava and deflecting most projectiles and there are some big things like the ominous trial spawner. So this ominous trial spawner is really interesting because when it first came to the game uh, last week in the Java snapshot, we didn't actually know what the odds were of getting any of the things that you can see in here, diamonds, emeralds, and the mace via the heavy core, but now we have precisely that. Thank you to the Minecraft wiki for providing this, by the way. This is in fact something they have done by digging into the loot tables on the Java edition. This is subject to change, but right now there is a very interesting fact, which is to say that you have a one in four chance of getting an enchanted golden apple. That seems really good. You have a uh, slightly higher than one in four chance of getting a diamond, but you have just a 1 in 12 chance of getting a heavy core. This is actually better than my own personal experience of it, which is really good, but the interesting thing that you can see from this loot table is that the lowest chance thing you can get is an enchanted book, and given this is the only way to uh, you know, to actually get the uh, mace enchantments, getting a fully enchanted mace is going to require going to dozens and dozens and dozens of these ominous spawners using your ominous trial keys, which you get from, obviously, uh, you're using the ominous uh, uh, effect around here, and you're going, to need to do, you're going to need to do this over and over and over again for a ludicrous amount of times, but that is just the way these things go. Wow, that was beautiful, by the way. Speaking of beautiful, I have to say that I think this update is beautiful, and it doesn't just contain the ominous spawner. It does, in fact, contain lots of other 1.21 things, like the ominous bottle. This is the effect you have to drink to get the bad omen. This can be either used for a raid or for the ominous spawners. Um, there is also four brand new other potions. I mean, there's a debate about whether the ominous bottle is a potion. I think personally, look at this. Look at the way it, you, you can see very clearly it's got a glass neck which has a cork at the top. In my opinion, that makes it a potion. That makes it therefore ridiculous that we can't stack other potions, but that's a point for another time. But we have four brand new potions. Wind charging, weaving, oozing, and infested. These are all very cool to see. And what is also very cool to see is that they are really working on making sure every single 1.21 feature makes its way over here to Bedrock. However, they're also working on a lot of other features, which I think is really, really cool. So let's talk about parity now. So let's come all the way back here to the start to talk about the ones which you might not immediately think of. So hello, I'm ABX Toycat, and 1.20.80 is done. It could be releasing next Tuesday, the 16th, or the 23rd of April. The 16th is the most likely. It's what I am emotionally planning around, although I'll be in the Middle East at the time. So who knows if I, you know, let's secretly hope that it's the 9th or the 23rd, but the 16th is the most likely release date for this and inside of that uh, and, and that's really cool but inside of the update 1.21 we're going to get a lot of improvements to parity which is great the first of these is that players can now stand on boats that are floating on water this is incredible i i thought this was just a fundamental flaw of the engine but they have finally fixed it just like you can on java and console edition you can jump on boats and use them kind of as platforms if you really want to previously this required using an absurd number of them a point to a point where it didn't even make any sense but now when you get out of the boat, you stand on top of it. Really, really cool stuff. Speaking of cool stuff, TNT explosion demo. I did one of these earlier, but it's just so fun. I want to do it again. Let's see what happens when a TNT explodes eight fences. 
previously you would expect to get like two or three maybe max, but now, what do you know, eight fences. Plus, every single piece of dirt that was destroyed, TNT is now good for survival and therefore speedrunning. This will change the speedrunning meta. Um, and also there is a game rule. If you want to set this back to how it was before, I love that Minecraft, even when they implement parity features like this, that 99% of people are going to love, they say, yeah, but if you want it to go back to how it was, um, you know, just in case for some reason you thought that was better, you can go to TNT, explosion, drop decay, set it to zero if you want, uh, or false rather, and you can make it so it goes back to how it was before. Really, really, really cool. Speaking of cool, all blocks uh, are dropped uh, uh, by default and they also will stack together into these nice big stacks you might see already right in there that there's a big stack of dirt here then another big stack of dirt this means that by getting more drops it won't lag the world more but instead will do it less that is genius if you ask me to have a positive change that actually makes the game run better also uh just as an important uh, piece of information this will not work and does not work on creepers so this creeper how many fences do we get for that well, that is two. <laughs> and uh, I, I don't think you need me to tell me uh, to tell you, but just in case you do, here is an end crystal, and here is me getting, what is that, five pieces of dirt back from it? So yeah, pro tip, uh, if you want to have explosions give you everything, it has to be TNT, it cannot be everything else. So next up, we have updated the player profile page, we'll talk about that in the UI section of the video. Uh, next up, we also have the fact that tall grass has been split into short grass and fern, that is a lovely little difference. We also have naturally spawning mobs now spawn at the center of a block. This fixes lots of issues where mobs wouldn't spawn on slopes, but it may break some player-made mob farms. From what I can tell from my friends who make these mob farms themselves, lots of mob farms will be broken, including my very own creeper farm. However, this is, uh, again, something that happens on Bedrock fairly often. I would advise against building a mob farm even now, because I the way I would word it is that Minecraft Bedrock is kind of in a beta state. Like, they're willing to make very big changes to worlds and that is a good thing it means we can get more progress but it does mean kind of annoying things if you make a farm it might have to change in an update's time speaking of an update's times cauldrons with potions keep the color when they are pushed with a piston so here is my lovely uh blue effect and uh, as you can see wow look it's moving and it's going great i don't know why it's changing color very slightly when it moves either but it is pretty cool also sprinting speed is no longer activated with a delay this was a very particular bug they introduced in 1.20.60 Glad they fixed that now. We also have fixed an issue of the loading screen getting stuck at 41%. They found this hilarious. What a specific loading issue bug. But yeah, they have made the loading screen much faster in general. They fixed various issues on touch devices, which is nice too. And they've also uh, made it so that anti-aliasing setting is defaulted to 2 instead of 4. Uh, in case you don't know anti-aliasing, you can think of it just as a graphical setting. It makes Minecraft look very slightly nicer because of all the sharp edges when you have it turned up. But it uses more of your graphics card and therefore will slow down your game. So having it set to 2 means that everyone will run Minecraft very slightly better after this update comes out. But in theory, it will look very slightly worse. But I think that's a trade-off worth making. Don't you think so? So that is everything in terms of the base game features found on this update. But there are still two big other features. In the latest Bedrock preview, Minecraft not only updated the game, but also updated the UI in a very big way. There is now a public-facing player profile, which is absolutely fascinating. Let me show you what it looks like. When you go to play and then you go to friends in the old UI, obviously there's a new one coming, uh, you can then go to add friend and you'll get something brand new, a QR code which allows people to add you without having to, I don't know, copy your very long and complicated game attack. Personally, I look at my game attack and I look at my QR code and I say that Meh, it's probably a little bit easier just to add this, but for a lot of people it might be easy just to have a QR code. Mine is now public. I don't know. I'm usually a private person. I don't know if that's okay to do, but something else you can see is you can search for your friends. So I could search for, uh, you know, Harrison, who is obviously playing uh, Minecraft right now, or I could search for literally anyone else through this. I, I like Old Raph, we played Minecraft recently. Let's see his stats, for example, and we can see that he has played Minecraft, obviously outside of his developer account, for four days, 18 hours, and 14 minutes. He's mined almost 10,000 blocks, defeated 200 mobs. It's, it's very fun to see, right? But then what we can do is we can compare our stats and we can see, <laughs> you know, don't look, don't, this is a normal amount of time to play Minecraft. How dare you imply it's not? But I've also mined about two million blocks and traveled 1.8 
billion distance. That is wild. I have traveled some serious places in Minecraft. Uh, that, that's like to the far lands and back several times. But yeah, as you can see, I have done a lot of things in Minecraft and you can compare this to your friends, but also you can do this not just for your stats, but also for your achievements. We can't see this in the preview, however, because, <laughs> well, that. But also because on uh, the way that Xbox friends work, which is the way that Minecraft friends work, um, when you add someone as a friend, you don't add them as a friend, you follow them, and then when they follow you back, you both become friends, but you're also still each other's followers, and so something fun that you can see, well, it was, there we go, something fun you can see is any of your followers' stats too. So I can check out Captain Nolan, for example, and see that he's played 68 days, and he's traveled 500,000, and our stats comparatively look like this. This is a really cool social system in Minecraft, and I really do like it. This is most of the new UI change, and honestly, I think this is really solid. I think that your privacy settings should be, I don't know, e easier configurable. I can't see the easy options right now. Uh, I don't know why you would need to keep your Minecraft playtime secret, but maybe you do. Maybe you don't want to. I'm sure there are people for whom that applies, and that might be handy. Next up, I think it's important to talk about, while we're on the subject of UI changes, let's talk about hardcore now. So when you go to play and you go to create new world, something fun in this update is the fact that you have all of these options here before, survival, creative, but also hardcore. You can't respawn if you die. Good luck you'll need it. And so the fun thing about this is it disables every other setting right here. Oh no, this is this is a bad news for me. I I, uh, I wanted to do 100 days in hardcore as soon as it came out. Um, I, I, I obviously would, I'm going to be starting uh, a, a brand new hardcore world. I'm going to be doing that right now. In fact, as you watch this video, that's probably been starting for a little bit. However, something tragic that has happened right here is the fact that, yeah, I am still a little bit sick. So I, I don't know how that's going to work. I am going to just stream hardcore and see how far I get. However, something about hardcore is the fact that you cannot, no matter what you do, add cheats to this world. Cheats are disabled because you selected hardcore mode. Also something fun is you get this little warning pop-up box before you start hardcore. You can turn this off if you want to, but it lets you know that when you die, you will not respawn. Game over. You cannot turn off hardcore mode after creating this world. After you die, you can see but not interact with the world. So just to go back to the world from the intro for a second, uh, here is my TNT showcase world. You can see that no matter what you do, there's no easy like cheat override that's like, oh yeah, let's go back into survival. If you are editing Minecraft within the game, obviously from outside of it, you can do things. Um, it says some settings are disabled because you selected hardcore when creating this world. This is something which I like because, you know, they could have babied it down and been like, also, <laughs> I, I, for some reason I'm in spectator, but I can still walk around. Huh. I guess we found another bug, but um, they, I, I was worried that they might baby it down and say, but what if someone loses their world? No, they've warned you enough. If you lose your world, it is going to be gone. That is a real risk that you run, and I, th I think that it is a really important one uh, too. So yeah, with that said, uh, this is what happens when you die in hardcore. You can look around your world all you like, but you can't ever interact with it again. Something which does seem good, so you can get a decent fly around, you can see what's happening, but you can't ever play that world again. Hardcore means hardcore, and hardcore death means never again do you get to enjoy a world, something which I find to be beautiful. But with that said, we can now jump into the conclusion of this video. What is going on with 1.21? Very good things. Not only do we now know that 1.20.80 is on its way to us with the armadillo and with the uh, brand new wolves, but we also know that 1.21 is very close to the end of development based on the fact that they're in the last couple of months or so. That's usually how long a snapshot or preview phase lasts. So that is very, very good news. Love to hear about it. However, uh, there is something that I think is important to note. One of those is that hardcore mode, even though it's in this preview, it's not guaranteed to be in 1.21. They previously gave us a timeline that said sometime after 1.21, the summer, they'll work on putting it into the game actual. So 1.21.10 could be more likely. They're using these minor updates a lot more now, which is not necessarily a bad thing. And also something that's really uh, not necessarily a bad thing is that Minecraft Bedrock was a week behind Java on getting all of the features from this preview but they added all of them in here, which is great, but then also managed to add some exclusives, or at least some parity. Maybe exclusive is the wrong word, but it's really cool to see that they're keeping up with the Java workload, but also adding cool, unique things. And uh, the fact that there is TNT explodable, great. The fact that hardcore will eventually be in there, really great. And even just the small thing of boats, it shows that Minecraft is getting better every single update, and that is really, really good news. So yeah, hardcore is not playable.
available yet, just to be clear. It is only available in the previews, but if you're willing to play the preview, like me, you might just be able to stream it. And so I want to quickly just give you a heads up. <coughs>